hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i've got a fun project for you guys i'm going to make a punch needle basket it's going to be the first time that i make one so i'm just going to take you along and see where it all leads and hopefully in the end we'll have a fun basket At the moment I have this wire basket on my desk and it's filled with all kinds of leftover yarns and as it is a wire basket the yarn is always sticking out on all sides so it's not really handy and that's what got me the idea to make my own basket and with punch needle of course. So what I'm going to do is use this as a reverence for size because I think it's a nice size and we're going to make it on a slip frame which i've got right here and i've put in panama cotton which i usually use when i start punch needling so let me first start by measuring the circumference of this uh, basket and we're going to use that as a reverence for what i should draw out so the circumference is 40 or 74 centimeters and it's uh, 16 centimeters high so um, because I don't have a frame of 74 centimeters wide I'm going to use uh, uh, this one which is 40 by 40 centimeters uh, but I'm going to make two uh, panels and then I'm going to stitch them together so 74 divided by half is 37 and since i don't want to get too close to the edges of my frame i'm going to make it slightly smaller so i think i'm going to make panels of 36 uh, centimeters so i think about an inch or two centimeters two and a half centimeters from the edge is a comfortable uh, comfortable distance distance the word is distance comfortable distance from the edge so i have this i couldn't find my long ruler my daughter stole it for me so i have to do it like this just put it like so straight so I'm just going to draw out this panel of 36 centimeters by 16 it was but I want to get two panels on top of each other so if I have two 16 it's 32 centimeters and I need a little space in between as well where I can cut the two panels so 16 should be fine I think I can do that with this one like so so now it's perpendicular so now I have two panels and I'm going to put a design on it so I didn't really prepare a design but I thought I would make it really simple just for the sake of this tutorial and I kind of like simple items so I'm going to make some lines like this let's just see something like this and just make all kinds of simple shapes like that simple design but really fun so i'm going to use these lovely uh, yarns this is a wool yarn which is going to be very durable and i'm going to punch it with the oxford needle this is the number 10 regular because it should fit the chunky yarn so i'm going to just punch it and i think i will have the loopy side on the 
front of the piece and then the inside is the flat stitch. So let's just begin. So with the Oxford needle it's really simple to thread. Push the yarn through the hole at the tip of the needle. Then put it inside the channel and just pull on the yarn on both sides. And then leave a small tail and then you can start. Make sure your yarn has slack. I'm not going to start at the edge because I don't want any tails there. So I'm going to start somewhere in the middle. So I've punched a little bit now and let me just quickly show you a few simple things that you have to obey, a few simple rules that you have to obey with punch needle. Punch needle is really simple. Other videos in which I explain exactly how punch needle works so I would suggest if you are interested in learning punch needle then that will be a really great place to get started and if you like I have some kits in the shop in my shop which you can find in the link in the description box and there I sell uh, tools and also kits with everything you need to get started with punch needle it's a great place to start with a kit because then you get everything you need in one box and you can see if you like it, if it's something for you. So I'm going to take a while to punch this entire design. So that's what I'm going to do right now and then I'll get back when I've finished it. So I'm working on the piece and while I'm doing it, I kind of don't really like the yellow in it. So. I really love this combination, but I don't really like the yellow. So what I'm going to do is just pull it out. And I can do that by pulling on one of the flat stitches like this. And I'm just going to punch over it again. Um, well, you can just scratch this a bit. And then you can just punch over it again. That's really no problem at all. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, wow, if you can pull it out that easy, then uh, it must not be secure when it's done. But, well, I really have to grab a stitch and start pulling on it. So when are you ever going to do that? I mean, this is not going to come undone. I just use it. Only when I pull on a stitch, grab it and take it, then I can just pull it out. It, it won't come undone that easily. Uh, so guys, I finished punching uh, both panels and um, I'm just going to clean up the back a bit with all the 
tails sticking out and what I do I just cut the tail right until the same height as the loops and then it will just fall in between and you won't see it anymore I took it out of uh, the frame and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put some glue just some simple glue for my kids and I'm going to put it around the edge just a little bit because I want to cut it now and I know that if I handle it a lot then the cloth will start to unravel very quickly quickly and I don't want that and with the glue I can prevent the cloth from unraveling I'm not going to put glue on the wool so just a little bit around the edges right here and here to prevent the monk's cloth from unraveling when I cut the fabric just a little bit just on the lines where I'm going to cut so I'm not even going to touch the wool spread it out and then of course afterwards I'm going to have to let it dry for a bit So it's all dried up right now and I'm going to cut out the panels and now we're going to start uh, sewing. So I'm excited, I really hope it's going to work and otherwise we're going to have to find some kind of solution. Uh, so let's just uh, start cutting. Okay, so I've just uh, put some clips on here to attach the two pieces together and I just wanted to show you. So this, the loopy side is going to be the, the outside of the basket. So this is basically going to be it and now we're going to start sewing it together. So let me just turn it back inside out. Okay, so I put clips here and here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip stitch this edge and I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, I think by whip, stitch, whip stitching it, it will look nice from both sides, so also on the inside and on the outside and it will make firm edge which will maybe help it stand up more. It's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see how it goes and uh, let's get started with the whip stitch. So for this one I have the uh, brownish color on both sides. I'm going to make this one in brown <clears throat> and I'm just going to take a length of yarn and then I have this simple tapestry needle as you can see right here make sure that everything is aligned really well on both sides as you can see and then i'm going to take up this one and start at the edge i'm going in on this side and on this side as close to the uh, wool as i can and then pull it through And then I'm going back for the next stitch and I'm going to put it right next to the other one and make sure I come up right next to this one as well and then pull it through then with these tails put them right here to the side and with my yarn I'm going to cover up this tail by whip stitching over it and then it's secure so this is going to be quite a big stitch maybe I want to 
you can fold it over because I don't like it to be too big so I'm going to fold it like this Otherwise, I'm going to have this huge whip stitch and I don't want that. So I'm just going to make sure that the loop, the tails are in between like this. Okay, so I'll go on. As you can see the tail is disappearing here so that's secure and um, yeah I think it's going to look really nice so I'm just going to continue all the way and let me I will come back and show you how I finish the tails on this end so I've now done this entire bit and I'm left with a tail so what I'm going to do is go under these stitches here or under a few and then go up like this just pull in the entire thread and then make sure that these won't come undone too much like this all right and then i can just cut it off right here close to the edge and like that they disappeared and it's all secure so I'm now going to stitch this little bit and then do the other side then I'm going to come back to you so I just finished the whip stitch on both edges and as I had hoped it does give it some stiffness here so that means it stands up better uh, so now we have to make the bottom and we have to whip stitch the entire top of the basket for the base of the basket the bottom i'm going to use the uh, previous basket as a um, measurement for the circle i have to cut out so i'm using a linen fabric and draw out this circle of course we'll also need a little bit of a seam allowance but so I've cut out a circle which I just made with the uh, circumference of the basket I took a, a little bit extra so this is the the circumference and then a little bit of seam allowance this is going to be the tricky part i think but um, bit by bit i'm going to put this uh, clasp i don't know how you call this uh, on here because i can't do it all at once and then i'm going to whip stitch again and with whip stitching uh, through this fabric means it's going to be a little bit harder because you have to pull harder since the yeah the holes are smaller you also have to pay attention to where you uh, push in the needle so on this side it's pretty obvious this is the inside of the basket this is going to be the outside and i put the drawing so i can see the line that i drew side 
and I put the monk's cloth and the linen fabric together and then I folded it over a little bit and then on this side I can see the drawing so this is going to be my reference point for pushing in the needle all the time because if I don't do that I can just I'm gonna be all over the place so that's very important over here I started so I clasped the linen fabric over the monk's cloth that's in between here and I'm pushing in the wool yarn right next to where I punched so that's here and then on the other side I'm coming up where I drew the line so that's right here so on top of the line so this line is going to be my guide on this side and on this side it's of course the the punched area line so that's going to be my guide and then I can pull it through it's a little bit more difficult than with the um, monk's cloth as I said but it's definitely doable so, and then I'm just going to do exactly the same and then on this side this is going to be the outside of the basket I just have this clean edge and on the inside uh, of the basket I will see the whip stitch so guys uh, as you can see the bottom is now attached and yeah I think it's starting to look so cool I'm really happy with it um, so it was kind of tricky to make it really round and as you can see there is a crease right here um, that happened because I think the circle was slightly bigger as in the beginning I took a smaller circumference and yeah that made it slightly too big so I had to fold it over here but I don't really mind I mean look at it it's going to be great what I also noticed is that these two um, yeah made sure that the circle was not perfect here because this is pushing down on it but yeah to be honest it doesn't really matter so what I have to do now is I have to stitch up whip stitch again this top area and I'm going to do that in this gorgeous color and then it's going to be finished guys it's been quite a long process I have to say this part the whip stitch on the inside um, was pretty hard on my hands yeah I, I can say my fingers hurt by the end of that but now I'm going to do this and this is going to be a lot easier since this is only monk's cloth and not the linen cloth so let's just start doing that
that was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed this project. I sure did. I'm so happy with my basket and I can't believe that I actually made this from scratch. So that's really cool and I hope you might be uh, interested in making one as well. If you liked the video, don't forget to put your thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!